So my recent obsession has been blender physics, and in this case, how to like fracture an object in a more interesting way. And in this tutorial, I don't want to just run like a dumb cell fracture that does this like volumetric thing. No, I want to do a surface fracture. I'm now thinking about this as a shell, like glass that's going to shatter, and it turns out that this is actually quite easy. Let's dive in super quick with the bad technique. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but we are going to talk about that later. I'm going to do a volumetric fracture. This is the one that's built into Blender. It looks a little ugly. You can select all of these and run a add rigid bodies such that it now does the physics. The main issue with this is, first of all, these chunks look too perfect. Even the tiny chunks look too perfect. Like, it, it doesn't look interesting. And in my belief, this is the source of all bad Blender simulations. Like, they stop here and it looks gross. This time, instead of a rigid body and a cell fracture, I'm going to run a command you may or may not know called Quick Explode. In the modifiers, it adds a particle system and it adds a explosion modifier. What that looks like is when I hit play, it divides our mesh, in this case, into two pieces. Because it's basically splitting the mesh based on particles, so it's spawning a bunch of little dots over this that tells it how to divide it. Uh, because we're using particles, our plane should no longer be a rigid body, uh, but it should be a collision. I'm just gonna do some settings, dampening, friction, stickiness, run the simulation again, and now we have something that looks a bit better. Of course, uh, it still looks like shit, because it's just dividing it in half. However, however, you'll notice that we do have 100 particles here, which means we can divide this surface into like up to 100 pieces. I'm just going to take the surface and run a subdivision, single subdivision. And all of the sudden, you can see we have more geometry. I want to highlight that this is the surface or the shell. So let's subdivide it more, click play. Let's subdivide one more time. And now we should have roughly 100 pieces. The fragments are like non-uniform. And then second of all, I'm actually going to decrease the number of fragments. So we only divide it into 20 pieces. But now uh, each piece is interesting. It kind of does this kind of like fast rotation thing. Uh, just a way to fix that is you enable rotation. Yeah, you can see now it like keeps its form. All of a sudden you might see these kind of cuts here. And what I can do with that is just apply it. So with the explode, hit control A to apply, get rid of the particle system, and all of the sudden we have a mesh where I can click L for linked that is properly divided. I'm going to select all of these and I'm just going to scale them down just a little so we can kind of see the uh, distinction between them. I can give them a bit of thickness by now applying a solidify modifier. As I increase the thickness, now we get these like nice looking uh, chunks here, but we can go even further with this. In fact, I can take one of these chunks, so let's say this one, I'm going to run a separate command, so separate by selection, and then I can run quick explode on this one. So we're going to kind of divide it again and again and again. Let me put solidify at the very end here. So now you can see that this piece is also being kind of like recursively fragmented. Again, we can enable rotation, and this is something that, again, you can apply. So apply your explode, get rid of the particle system and now we have even more fragments that I can select all and then kind of scale those down as well. Uh, so you could kind of go crazy with this but uh, what I care about now is how do I run uh, physics on this. Apply uh, the solidify modifiers which means uh, now this is actual uh, geometry. I'm going to select both of these and in edit mode, I can say separate this time by loose parts, which will look at each individual chunk. We've effectively done our cell fracture, but for surfaces. I can make sure to apply rotation and scale. That's control A. We do that for our simulation, so it isn't glitchy. Uh, origin to geometry, so you can see these are all centered. We're going to run a add rigid bodies, which will need a bit of work. But if we play this now, <laughs> you know, I can take this plane, which is no longer... Uh, in collision territory, because we got rid of our particles, but now we run it through a passive. And I should also apply rotation and scale. So now you get the best of both worlds. You get the rigid body with the benefit of um, 
kind of like more interesting uh, surface shattering. Bit of a tip, you can select a bunch of chunks once they have rigid bodies and run a connect command. And what that's going to do is it's going to add all these uh, constraints, but these uh, pieces are now connected even through the simulation. You want that because now we can take our constraints make them breakable. So apply breakable and then copy to select it so that they all have this property. There you go. So now we got this nice chunk that divides um, a bit. And I should mention, I just made a product that takes cell fracture, again, that volumetric fracturing, and made it much, much better. This is how I made these animations. Any object, doesn't matter if it's a million faces, six faces, whatever, go into edit mode. I'm gonna run my fracture volume command, which you can see by default, opens up this window and creates kind of this uh, distorted fracture, which is new. Um, and you can just kind of keep adding iterations. Each one is going to be a new cut. Notice this is procedural. Uh, nothing bakes until you're done with it. I'm going to increase the noise strength because this does non-flat cuts if you wanted to. Increase the detail on that so that there's more going on here. And then just vary the seeds. And that's all you do. It is done. How do you show that it's done? I'm just going to scale it down. And you can see it fractured it. These chunks don't have flat cuts like we talked about. So that's just the thing I've been working on. I take this selection, I fracture volume, let's say by 10 iterations. And this time I don't need too much detail because they're like smaller components. And there you go. You've now fractured the fracture and each one can be a rigid body thing. Already got a couple sales over at the uh, Blender Market, so check it out. It has a ton of features, like it isolates the inside, gives it its own material. It has a faster Boolean operation than Cell Fracture does. It has debug settings, and of course it has that rocky fracture line thing. And speaking about fracture volume, the revolutionary way to fracture an object, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and that's relevant because I'm advertising this product or making it accessible through my website. You just go to edit. I now have like control over each window that you can now move and reposition. I can also preview my website and check that things like uh, forms work. This is actually one of the features I really like about Squarespace. It's going to email it to me. I can respond. You can run your business there. Analytics comes packaged with Squarespace. For me, there's a spike because I just redesigned it. It's effectively a new website. There's there's this nice asset library that carries, here you can see actually these fracture animations, where you can save your files. Head over to Squarespace and design your website, and when you're ready to take that thing live, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.